This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to do proofs in geometry. And we're going to start off at the basic level just to get you introduced to the um, process. You know, wh how does it all piece together? What does a proof look like? Uh, well, usually a proof, you're given some information. You know, you, you start off with some knowledge, some uh, situational uh, knowledge. And uh, usually you're given a diagram. If you're not given a diagram, it's strongly recommended that you create one for the problem. Like I would draw the angle uh, and then try to draw what it looks like what a segment is. But we're in good luck here today. We've got a picture already or a diagram to use, so we don't have a problem with that issue. All right, so uh, to recap this, what we do is we're given information and we're trying to figure out what to prove. Now normally we know what to prove, but uh, I'm just trying to get you used to this process. So I'm going to leave this kind of unknown at the moment. When we do proofs, we have two columns. Uh, there's always the statement column on the left, and then there's the reason column on the right. We put statements down and we justify every statement with an appropriate reason. So the reason has to relate to what we already know. So we put down here something we already know which then justifies new things that we put here on the left or new statements. All right, like for instance, uh, let's say uh, we've got this proof and we're going to try to flesh out something from this proof. All right, well the first thing we have to do is uh, always write down the given information here. So I'm going to put down, let's see, What's our statement? Our first statement is always what we're given. So we're going to say that EG, segment EG bisects, and I'm going to try to squeeze this in here, angle DEF. Okay, so there's our first statement. Uh, and why or how do we know this to be true? This is information that we were given. So we would say, this is given information. Someone told us that this is true. So we're going to base this whole proof off of what uh, we are told or what we're assuming to be true. All right, now if this is true, we're going to go into the future here. We're going to come up with something new. Well, if we know that EG, this segment right here, and it's going to bisect DEF, there's angle DEF, well, what it means to bisect is to cut in half. That is the definition of what bisect means. So you always relate to terms if you can. So if it means I'm taking this angle and I'm cutting in half, then these two pieces right here, these two angles, are both half as big as the entire angle. So in other words, those two angles have to be equal to each other. They're both half as big as the original angle. And that's going to be my next statement. I'm going to say that angle, let's see, the left one would be DEG, DEG, and angle, let's see, the right one would be FEG is one way of naming it, FEG. I know that these two angles have to be congruent to each other. Uh, that's Okay, so I'm drawing that information from some source. Now I have to list what allows me to make that claim. Well, I'm using the definition of what bisect means. So my rationale for coming up with this new statement is I would say I'm using the definition. I'm going to abbreviate here for space. I'm going to say definition of bisect. A lot of times people abbreviate. I'm doing that because of space, but I would write this out uh, reason. It is the definition of bisect that allows me to make this congruent claim. All right, so there you go. There's my uh, proof. It turns out to be two rows. Now, there's really nothing else that I can prove here. I can't prove anything else in this picture, as it turns out. I know nothing else. What, what people like to do is base uh, statements on what it looks like, what the diagram looks like. Like, for instance, this looks like an isosceles triangle. So people will make claims based on that. I have no idea if this is an isosceles triangle or not. I don't know if DE and EF are congruent to each other. Looks like they are, but maybe this is uh, 3 inches on the right side, but maybe this is uh, 3.1 inches 
on the left side. So I, I cannot make the claim that those are congruent. I can't make any other claim. Uh, I guess I could say that parts are congruent themselves by reflexive property, but it doesn't really help for anything. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to say that this is a two-step proof, and we're done. So it's a basic level. All right, I'm going to show you another one. All right, we have another problem here that I put up on the board, and uh, we're going to take a look at it. So we got a whole new diagram and some new given information. All right, like all proofs work, I am going to place the given information down here. So I'm going to say that J, I got to write small here, J is midpoint of KM. Okay, so that's given information. And, you know, sometimes they list, you know, these statements in two different lines. I'm just going to shove it all into one line, but you can put these in two separate lines if you like. J is the midpoint of LN. Oops, let's try that again. LN. All right, so we've got that. What's our reason? It is given. This is given information. All right, uh, so what are we going to do with this now? Well, it turns out we're going to understand what this terminology means, and we're dealing with midpoint, right? So if we've got midpoint, that means that this is the middle of the segment. So if here's KM, if that's the middle of the segment, then I know that these two segments right here have to be congruent to each other. All right, so I'm going to make that claim in my next step. I'm going to say, uh, okay, I'm going to say that segment JK that's the segment right over here, is going to be seg uh, congruent to segment JM. JM. Uh, and it's got to come up with some kind of rationale for this, and I'm using the definition of bisect. Okay, I'm s or I'm sorry, not bisect. Well, bisect kind of means the same thing as midpoint, um, but really I'm using the definition of midpoint. So I'm going to put definition of midpoint. And I just like to abbreviate with things. It's a definition of midpoint. All right, likewise, I'm going to use the next statement here. J is the midpoint of LN. Well, here's LN. Here's the midpoint, right? That's the midpoint right there. So it means that this segment has got to be congruent to this segment. All right, so I'm going to list that in my proof, too. I'm going to say that JL is congruent to JN. And again, I'm not going to put the word ditto or anything like that. I'm actually going to write this out. I'm going to put definition of midpoint. All right. Now, uh, what some people like to do is make claims, again, that are not necessarily true. They like to read into the diagram. They like to say, hey, this looks like a rectangle. If this is a rectangle, then the opposite sides are congruent. You know, it does look like a rectangle, but I don't know if it is. So you can't base, um, you know, things off of the way they look. You can only use properties in geometry. Like, for instance, if I wanted to, uh, I'm starting to get into more advanced. I mean, there are other things I could do. Like, I could say I've got some angles congruent. I could see that this angle is congruent to that angle, and I would say that that's true by the vertical angles. So I could list this. Uh, I would say that angle, of course, here on the left side would be LJK, is congruent to angle MJN. MJN. And my reason for this is I would say vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles, and sometimes we abbreviate using symbols, vertical angles are congruent. And likewise, I could say that these two angles here, LJM, is congruent to KJN. And, you know, sometimes we don't know where this is going to lead us. Maybe you could even see which triangles are congruent. But that's kind of an advanced concept. All right, so I just want to give you the flavor of how this works. Every statement has to be justified with a reason. 
Uh, and sometimes, and we're going to show you in the next uh, you know, uh, video on proofs, how to take these statements to form newer statements. So we, we base our conclusions then off of what we know, and we use these statements to go even with further statements. But that's going to be in our next video. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out all our interactive technology and quizzes, uh, lessons, videos, and so on. Take care.